Hello, people of the Raspberry Pi community. I'm here to show you how to um, easily play PS1 games on your Raspberry Pi um, running uh, RetroPie through Emulation Station. This is the much easier way, so you don't have to deal with all those bin files and garbage when you download normal PS1 ISOs. So what you want to what you're going to want to do is go to emuparadise.me, scroll down to the ROMs, ISOs, and games link, scroll down to Sony PSP eBoots. Now this is where you find whatever game you want to play. Um, we're going to go with, uh, let's, let's just do Crash Bandicoot. Download links. Download and download the game. It's about 524 megabytes, so it's going to take just a little bit. In the meantime, um, what you want to do is get your flash drive out and ready. Let's plug that in. Now we've got our RetroPie folder. You want to go into ROMs, scroll down to PSX, and now we wait. All right, now that the download has been completed, you just want to click on it. Um, get out of here. We don't want to buy WinRAR. Who does that? Click on Crash Bandicoot folder and click on this weird other folder that's it's a very strange name, and you'll come across this file called eboot.pbp, and that is the game that we want to uh, drag, or that's the file we want to drag into the uh, PSX folder. So we just click, drag, and it'll extract and transfer. Take a take a little bit. Uh, I don't think I'm using a USB three flash drive, so. Gosh darn peasant technology. Anyways, um, PBP files are what Sony actually used to bring PS1 games to modern consoles such as the PS3 and PSP. It's basically what they use to um, for the for the PS1 classics lineup. So if you are a PlayStation user, you might know what that is. Um, it's basically just the modern day equivalent of of all those really old uh, file formats. So it just packs it all into one nice file, and uh, yeah, and this doesn't require using a BIOS. Um, so that's pretty nifty, huh, guys? By guys, I mean all like. One and a half of you watching. One and a half, yes. Now we just want to right click, hit rename, and just rename it to whatever the game is called. So in our case, it's Crash Bandicoot. Bandicoot. Hit enter, and there we go. That's all you do. Now we want to take this out and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. All right, now that we've got the eBoot file on this flash drive, we're gonna plug it into the Raspberry Pi here. If I can do this with one hand. Go ahead and turn it on. Switch, uh, I have this hooked up to a TV, so just switch the inputs. And then we'll load up the Raspberry Pi. And basically, if you're a, a RetroPie user, you'll know that the green flashing light on your motherboard means that it's transferring games, okay? Well, files, I suppose, not necessarily games. So basically what it is, it's doing, it's copying the file onto the Pi. So here we go. 
It's about to load up, hopefully. I don't know why it's taking so long. Hmm. I don't have a, um, a dual shot controller configured, so I'll just have to use this NES controller or well, this 8 bit dough NES style controller um, just to load up the game and show you that it actually works. Okay, now we're going to go to the PlayStation section and hopefully it copied. Yep, there we go, Crash Bandicoot right up top. And what I like to do is push select on your controller, go to edit games metadata, and then go all the way down to scrape. And what scrape does, it pretty much config, it, it uh, collects information about the game uh, over the internet, I believe. It's probably over the internet. I mean, I don't think this is all stored on the, on the thing, but yep, Crash Bandicoot. Click on that, working and then hit save and now you'll see crash bandicoot oops the artwork the the uh the bio or not really the bio the description and i uh, just click on it and it'll load right on up and i don't have a as i said i don't have a dual shot controller configured right now so I'm not really going to be able to play this game too well, but there you go. It's definitely working. Let's see if I can get into a gameplay section real quick just to show it off. Um. Yeah, there we go. Doing this with one hand, so it's a little hard, but anyways, there you go. That's how to do it. Um, the easy way, instead of trying to find a BIOS and deal with uh, a bunch of stupid files and all that. So hopefully you guys can use this information. Hopefully you learned something. Um, I I really wish this was available when I was trying to figure this out. <laughs> so uh, take it easy and happy. Happy emulating.